This video shows how to create a test case document. A test case is created within the context of an implementation notes and is generally positioned within it as, as an appendix, although it could be checked out as a separate document which could be given to test case analysts or an offshore team. It assumes that you've gone through the getting started notes, that you've created yourself a folder. I've used my solution here that you've positioned your implementation notes document in, in another folder and this is my solution where my test scripts will be. VUGen limits the, my ability to structure this folder so I can't put a number in there, I must put in the name of the solution. Let's go to the implementation notes folder and in there I've got my document which I'm, I put in the name, my solution, which I can do and I have a test case template assumes that you've edited the test case template and, and tailored it for your own needs based on what you feel most of your test cases will contain but also leaving in the structure there's another there's another set of instructions for describing the test case template itself there's also another set of instructions that describe the implementation notes itself too but we'll open it and we'll just look at the elements of the implementation notes that are important for creating a test case. And we look at that by going into the bookmarks. So if I go insert bookmark, we'll see that we have a number of test uh, bookmarks that start with V. Ignore the reference ones there just in case you want to use them for re referencing within the document to other documents. Important parts of this for creating a test case is the configuration section and the test case summary section. So let's go to the test case summary section and we'll see that it's a heading um, and a table. The text between the heading and the table can be anything you like. I like to separate my test cases into separate releases so that for each release there may be test cases that become obsolete and maybe test cases that are new. So the table for the latest release is at the top and contains only the test cases for that release. Test case ID and the test case name are very important. Everything revolves around the ID. The name can be anything you like, but the ID is important. And in any document or script, the test case ID is separated from the test case name by one space. It's good practice to have the script that you intend to use to have the same name as the test case, in that case ID and name. However, you may have several scripts. Uh, it's common practice to script things twice, but if for a complicated test case, you may need to script it several times, in which case the test case names can vary. So that's useful. Let's go to the configuration section. Once again, I'll just close this. Once again, this can be this is usually set up to what you want for your configuration. So you have foundation items there, you have folder items there to describe where it's where these test cases and the scripts are to go. And if you use a database, there's database information there. Um, some documentation styles you may want to use. But basically that's, that has to be have all of these items in it. Also assumes that you've loaded in the macro and that the implementation as document is able to execute the macros. Um, I've used this icon here in my quick access toolbar but you could have used any item icon you wanted. So let's just open that. We presented with this. Uh, we know that there's no test cases there because we just saw the test case table was empty and it tells me so. I can't do much else except either cancel or create a new test case. So we press that button and we have the ability to put in a test case ID and a test case name. The test case ID is important as I mentioned before and it's my preference to have two letters and then three digits. That gives me a thousand test cases for this with the same prefix. But I could also have different prefixes within the same solution if I want. And I find that useful sometimes. But I'll just put here um, AR for accounts receivable. So these are all my accounts receivable test cases within this solution.
because there's obviously other areas of, of a financial accounting system um, like accounts payable and all that stuff. So you may want to distinguish the test cases between them. In general though, the test case ID is meant to be a non a something ID. You can have up to 10 characters for this. So um, I'm not allowed to have a space in there. I can have several more letters, no space. But I can have an underscore if I want to. I don't want to, it's one AR. I must have two letters. And if I want to go 10, um, so it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if it's faulty, I don't get the apply button. So I have no way, of, no chance of putting things in incorrectly. Let's go back to our desk case ID that I prefer. I'll talk about prefixes later. Now, if I'm, I mentioned before that the ID plus a space plus a name must no be no longer than 50 characters. That's because performance center will reject them. So if I have a, a, a five character ID plus a space at six characters then I can have a 44 character test case name but if I have 10, ID, 10 characters for the ID plus one is 11 then I can only have 39 that is for the name so I prefer to have five that gives me more characters to use for the name so if I say this is a test case for creating receivables I keep adding digits, letters, 